Okay. Um, I've got a function written here, and we're we're gonna we're gonna look for the derivative of it. Okay, we're gonna take the limit, um, and we're gonna basically shrink h down, just like we did in the last video, and we're going to arrive um, at a slope formula for this function. And if you're not familiar with this function, um, it's a good idea to maybe kind of just uh, if you get a graphing calculator, go ahead. But it's, it's looks something like this. So, you know, it looks like uh, no matter, just, uh, just for starters, it looks like no matter what, if I take the slope here, actually it looks like those should be equal, shouldn't they? But if I take the slope here, if I take the slope here, it looks like these, the, the, the rate at which this function changes are always negative, right? You see that? I mean, all, every single slope is negative. I mean, there's not one point on this function where we're going back upwards, where the rise over run, okay, is, is positive. So the, the so just just for starters, uh, this thing should probably end up, um, you know, I, I should probably have a negative slope at the end of the day. So um, in the last video, um, I didn't really write it down, but we kind of implied, I hope I have enough room, that the slope formula for a curved line, aka the derivative, okay, it's gonna be like that. Okay, there's your, there's your, there's your animal. So, um, you know, we're just gonna keep using this formula and eventually we're gonna, we're gonna master it. And then we'll move on to a simpler one after that, actually. So, um, like I said, we have f of x, Okay, it equals one over x. Okay, so let's write, let's if um, we ha if f of x is one over x, then what is f of x plus h? Kind of goes back to algebra again, right? Back to your functions. Well, it's just going to look like that. That's all that that's going to be. So let's go ahead and keep these two things in mind. Um, this is this is going to be almost like y1 and y2 again, okay? Back from your slope formula, and the same thing uh, kind of goes on with um, your, your uh, x's, okay? Uh, you get your x plus h. Well, that's going to be x2, and x. That's just going to be your x1. Coordinate. So let's go ahead and write these as a set of points, and that's what I like to do. So my first one is going to be x value goes first, okay, this is point 2, and then point 1, oh, I didn't get it on the screen, sorry. Well, it looks like the x value right there is x, and the other one is 1 over x, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and just use that uh, that formula that we uh, have come to know so dearly, and I'm just gonna, you know, write, write it. I'm just gonna write it out, you know. So, um, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and take the limit of it. So I'm gonna take the limit of it. It's be 1 over x plus h in parentheses. Minus 1 over x over h. Because I know that the, the x's are going to end up canceling out. So, okay, so here we go. And it kind of looks like we have a mess on our hands, doesn't it? This, this isn't as nice as our other um, x squared function. And this is one of the first things you'll uh, realize. So, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a common denominator. Okay, that's I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, I could try multiplying by the conjugate. Uh, it looks like it might be easy to get a common denominator. So the the uh, common denominator is just going to be x times x plus h. 
Okay, so if we if we get we we can get these both looking the same by just multiplying this by this and this by this. Okay, so over here I'm just gonna write x times x, and then let's see here I'm gonna go x plus h over x plus h. Okay, and that should get me. Um, where I want to go. So let me go ahead and just write this out again. I'm gonna see I'm gonna take the limit And it looks like I'm gonna have X over X X plus H And I'm gonna have Remember to use those parentheses. I'm gonna have X plus H over X X plus H. Don't forget that everything is over H right there. So I got that going, okay? And it's getting messier and messier by the minute. So let's uh, go ahead and distribute this negative sign in here. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the limit. You have to do that every time or else you get it wrong. And if I distribute my common denominator is going to be here's how here's how I like to do it okay and I'm not gonna forget H down there but the top is the only tricky part now if I distribute this negative sign in here don't worry about the denominator at all okay um, only you only have to worry about taking it and doing it to the top uh, the numerator so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this negative sign I'm just gonna distribute it in here Okay, it's just like a negative one. So and and since I and that's really all I'm interested in now is just this top piece. My goal is to just rewrite this um, as one term. So this x is gonna stay up here. This is gonna become a negative x, and then this is gonna become a negative h. Okay. And another thing I want you to understand is that this h down here, we have a really weird looking fraction. Okay, and it's going to get weirder before it gets better, but anything by itself is really just h over 1, right? Okay, and if you remember, that's fine, but if you don't remember, um, this can basically get flip-flopped and then stuck right back up on top, okay? And if that happens, we'll get 1 over h, okay? So anytime you have that, you can just flip-flop it, flip it upside down, and stick it up on top. So... So let's go ahead and do that, and I don't want to do too many steps in one, but I think it's fairly obvious that those x's will end up uh, equaling zero. So let's go ahead and write this again. And that gives me negative h Okay. Okay, you see what I did? All I did was the, the two x's, x minus x is zero, and I just flipped this h over one. I just, I just stuck it up top, and then it becomes one over h, okay? Okay, so we got that. Now, this might look a little weird too, but it's still, you know, coming back to algebra, we still end up with um, canceling these guys out. So I'm gonna take the limit again. Actually, I'm not really taking the limit, but it looks like I have negative one. Okay, and I've got x right there. I just rewrote it. Now it looks like now I can go ahead and shrink h down to zero without anything bad happening. Okay, because if I do that, if I go ahead and take the limit, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get, uh, if, if h goes to zero, and I distribute the x, I'm going to get x squared plus 0, right? Okay, this is 0. h shrinks down to 0, which is just negative 1 over x squared. And remember earlier when we drew the graph, that should make sense because just looking at it, all these slopes, all these tangent lines are, are going down. You know, none of them are going up. They're all going down. So it looks like uh, we're pretty much there on that one, okay? And, and you know, the, this formula is easy to memorize, but it, it takes some algebra skills to get down there and, uh, and, and figure out the slope, okay? More examples on the way.